How many of you are wearing wearables? Some sort of smartwatch? A few, okay. Well, we'll see what happens as... <laughs> Great, <laughs> her dad is. Okay. Anyway, I do want to tell you about wearables and sensors and how I think it's going to transform health and really the way we manage our lives. So sensors and, and I would argue health devices have been around for a long, long time. The stethoscope, I think all of you know, it's still in use. It's been around for almost 200 years. Along the way, we've had electrocardiograms that measure your heart activity, your electrical activity. We've had pacemakers, ear, am, ear implants, other sorts of devices that have helped us manage our health. Um, so what's special now? Why am I talking about this? Well, what's special now is the fact that there are thousands of these devices out on the market. Okay? There's all kinds of sensors for all kinds of activities, and that's what I'm going to show you today. I think a fi at least 500 of these will impact your health or can be used for measuring health, health vitals, if you will. Um, what's also special about today is that any of you can buy these things, whereas in the old days, most of these other devices we talked about, they actually had to get prescribed by a doctor or a physician uh, or someone in the healthcare industry. Now there's literally thousands of devices out there that all of you can purchase on your own without a prescription and start using. Certainly one of the most accessible of these, I think many of you are aware, are the smartwatches. There are literally over 50 smartwatches that are out on the market. Probably some of the most popular ones are the Apple Watch and Basis Watch. I actually have two watches. I usually wear three at any one time, actually. Why do I do this? Well, these watches, many of them measure the same things. They tend to measure your activities, meaning your steps, how much you bike, how much you run. Uh, they typically measure heart rate, and they're all actually pretty good. We've sized them up, and they look quite accurate. But some of them will also measure other special things. They'll measure things like skin temperature, uh, measure sleep activity, stress response. Stress, by the way, is usually perspiration and conductance across your skin is how they measure stress. So they'll measure wealth of other things, all vitals that can possibly help you manage your health. You don't even have to buy a watch in many cases to get some of this. Many of you may know you can get free applications, free apps, if you will, on your smartphone. And this is just one that I use. It's actually called Moves. It measures steps, biking, and running, and can even tell you where you do this activity. It has a GPS and saves that data. So if you're hiking in the Santa Cruz Mountains, it will record all those steps and tell you we're in the Santa Cruz Mountains. It remembers all this. And in fact, on October 4th, this is the number of uh, miles I walked, I guess, in total. The amount I biked and the amount I ran is all sitting up on there and saved. And I've actually been doing this for several years. So in fact, I have several years worth of data all piled up on this. This is not the only sorts of things you can measure. You can measure electrocardiograms. You can measure these electrocardiograms. Again, this is the signal across your heart, your electrical signal. You can do that right on your iPhone with these basically titanium alloys that will measure your conductance. And there are other ways of doing this now. There are other devices as well. So you can get, again, pretty sophisticated measurements right all on your smartphone. If you have a patch, you can, in fact, get this activity continuously. This you would have to you know, directly measure, but you can put a patch and have it measure that activity continuously for a week and various, again, heart uh, characteristics. There are also devices that measure other things as well. I'm carrying two that I use quite a bit. Uh, this one here measures your oxygen in your blood, if you will. It's called oxygenated hemoglobin, and it will measure um, it right off your finger along with your heart rate. This does the same thing. It measures oxygenated blood. You put it on your forehead, measures your heart rate, and it'll also give a proxy for blood pressure. There are other measurements for blood pressure as well. There are devices um, that you can buy, portable devices. Um, here's one here. I won't demo it for you, but you can actually take this and put it around your arm just like you would do in a doctor's office. And again, you can measure your blood pressure directly at home or whenever you want and see how you're doing. As if that's not enough, something probably many of you do quite often, especially as you get older, is you weigh yourself. Well, now you can get an electronic scale. Um, this is one here. I use this every day. Okay. It measures my weight. I step on it in the morning, every morning. It measures my weight, my fat, measures uh, my heart rate, 
also measures the air temperature and the humidity outside, saves all that information, and basically sends it right to my smartphone. And in fact, oops, we've lost it, but that right up there is in fact my activity from yesterday. And I have one from this morning that I didn't get loaded up in time. So yesterday I weighed 144.3 pounds and that was my heartbeat when I measured myself on the scale. So you can collect all this information, save it, it's all piling up on your iPhone. Other sorts of things you can do that we think are very important is you can measure your food. Some of this is manual. There are many apps out there for being able to enter your food manually, but there's also versions where you can photograph your food and these are trying to get, they're, they're still primitive, but they need to, they, they are moving along to be able to calculate your calories and such and fat and just from the pictures on the iPhone. So you can record all that as well. Other things you can do, and this one's very, very important, is you can continuously measure your glucose. So I have a small sensor on me right now that actually measures my glucose continuously. It's been doing it since March. I have to swap it every week. And once again, it takes that glucose measurement, sends it to my iPhone. Why do you do this? This is very, very important for type 1 diabetics who don't produce insulin, so they actually either inject it or have a device that continuously injects it so they can monitor their glucose and make sure it's at the right level. In my case, I actually have elevated glucose levels, so it's very handy for me to have this information and see why, what kinds of things are causing it to be elevated. This is, in fact, several months of my measuring glucose every day. It's plotted on a 24-hour scale, but you'll see two peaks there, and there's actually three. After each meal, I get a spike of glucose, and I know what foods actually cause that spike and which ones cause it to spike the highest. So it's actually very handy for me to know which ones to avoid or how to better spread them out so that I don't get giant glucose spikes every day and so I can better man manage my glucose levels. If you want to measure more things, there's other very interesting items out there. There are portable radiation sensitive sensitivity measures. So I have one here that I wear. This will let you measure radon. Um, especially if you're working outside or you're in an area where radon is released in the basement. It turns out mine goes off and goes buzzing like mad when I go on an airplane because there's more radiation on an airplane. So I can measure how much radiation I'm exposed to every time I take a flight. Why, why do we have all these things? Well, one is they tell us how well we're doing. That moves application I told you before, it constantly tells me how wonderful I am. Uh, basically, Here's one taken a few weeks ago. It tells me I had my best biking day of the month, you know, last Monday. Um, you can see just Monday, six days ago, five days ago. So we have, uh, and they constantly do this. You're always doing well in your um, walking or running or biking or what have you. The same is true for your food. When you're measuring this, you can see how many calories you're um, eating and such, uh, and whether you're doing well or if you've been eating way too much. And the same is true for other sorts of devices as well. They're constantly giving you feedback. They not only give you feedback, sometimes they tell you what to do. Your Apple Watch, for those of you who have this, will tell you if you've been sitting too long. Time to stand. I get that quite a bit from my Apple Watch. It harasses me to stand if I've been sitting too long so that I'll get my um, blood circulating and such. And the Basis Watch has similar sorts of things as well. So again, you can get all kinds of feedback. All of this isn't just for your um, health, although health is clearly a big part of this. Um, why, do, why is this going to be valuable? Well, um, if you think about it in general terms, how often do you go to a doctor? Maybe once a year, once every other year, and you probably spend 15, minute, 15 to 30 minutes with your doctor. On the other hand, you're awake, as you can see, on average, 372,000 minutes a year and yet only a small sample is taken when you go to your doctor. So really the power of um, having all these continuous measures is so that you can see if something looks a little strange, maybe at a time when you're not in the doctor's office, and maybe it'll be subtle, maybe it won't show up in those 15 minutes, it'll just be a small inflection, and you want to catch this better. As a case that helped me, this happened this past summer, I in fact got Lyme disease. The way I was first clued into this is that I've been measuring my heart rate with all these devices as well as uh, oxygen and it turns out my heart rate elevated and my oxygen dipped a little bit more than usual and because I've been measuring myself I was 
kind of aware of something wasn't quite right. Next day I had a low grade fever uh, and it was pretty clear from these various measurements something wasn't right and the fact that it was a little bit different from usual helped me figure out that I in fact had Lyme disease which I don't think we would have detected so easily because I was in Norway at the time where they have almost no Lyme disease in existence. So it was very, very handy to have actually figured this out on my own. Other sorts of diseases we think um, this will be powerful for, at least some of the press says this, is that in fact this, these kinds of measurements will be useful for modern depression, Parkinson's disease, autism, uh, chronic pain, epilepsy seizures. You should be able to measure with these sorts of smart devices to see what kinds of changes are occurring and how severe they are and how frequent they are. You can keep track of all this stuff automatically, again, if you're continuously measuring. Now, it's not just health is the only area where these sensors are used. You can use them for other sorts of activities as well. There are basically, if you will, underwear, both shorts and shirts you can wear <coughs> that sense your muscle strains and things like that. One shown here, uh, I have a pair of shorts, has about a dozen sensors on it. It will at various locations and it sees, measures your muscle activity and such and sees how you're performing when you're running and doing other sorts of things like lifting weights and you can see if you're imbalanced uh, and maybe improve your gait and how you might actually improve your performance. So that's another very handy thing to have. And if that's not enough, for those of you who play baseball or golf, you can actually put sensors on either the equipment, yourself, or both, so that you can improve your performance. So for the case of baseball, improve your you know, swing, and for golf, swing as well, but a different kind of swing. These, these measurements will tell you exactly how you're performing and how you might be able to better improve yourself. Um, other kinds of things you can measure if you want, you can measure everything you're doing. So many of you heard about the Google Glasses from a few years ago, and they're coming back, I'm told. Um, they'll, they can continuously photograph what's going on and who you meet. Well, there are other versions of this. I have a version I use, the one up in the right, upper right there. It's called an autographer. It takes three pictures a minute, no sounds, but it follows what you're doing. And so you can see what you're doing. If your heart rate goes up, you might go back and see what you were doing at that time. There are smaller versions here. You see the one in the bottom right, and some of these even walk under or work underwater, so you can use them there. As if this isn't enough, you can actually have these for your pet, okay? A pet cam, so that you can not only follow what you're doing, but you can see what your cat or dog is doing at any one time. I'm sure you really want to know that, um, because you'd hate to miss their exciting life at any moment, I'm sure. Anyway, the point is you can actually follow all these sorts of things uh, if you like. So not only that, you don't have to just wear one or the other. Of course, you can wear many, many of these. I wear about eight of, the, eight of them at any one time. So I'm measuring all kinds of interesting uh, activities and I'm following my heartbeat and oxygen. So that's very, very useful. Uh, ultimately, this lets us follow many activities of our lives, food, stress, um, sleep, health in general, and you can, the goal is to be able to synthesize this information into a useful fashion. In fact, for me, I wound up collecting about two million data, data points a day, which is about three quarters of a billion measurements a year. So collecting lots of data, and I know exactly how I'm behaving at certain times in terms of my physiology, and so uh, this is the scale data you can collect on a person, and this isn't this isn't huge, this is a very manageable amount of data for any one person. Uh, one might ask, well, is this too much information? Do you really want to know all this? Um, and so again, is it too much? And my answer is no, it's not too much information. Yes, we want to know all this. And the question is why? Well, my view is that this is going to help us manage our health. And by analogy, if you think about a car, our car has lots and lots of sensors, right? It has sensors for the brakes so that you go around corners better, sensors for the speed so you don't go too fast, sensors for engine heat, etc., fuel sensors, GPS sensors. Some of these are, of course, the same sensors you can wear, um, maybe slightly different in form, but at least analogous. And so we have lots of sensors for our car. The car is a high performance machine, if you will. I would argue humans are even a more sophisticated machine 
And it's not unreasonable to have more sophisticated sensors making sure the human machine is operating optimally and without problems. So if you're going to spend a lot of money to have your car working well, I would argue it makes more sense to spend even more money to have your human body working well. Um, how is all this information collected? You've probably noticed already nearly all of these devices will in fact transfer, their, transfer the information onto your smartphone. Right now, a lot of it's independent there, but in the future, we'll be able to synthesize all that and put it into a more common package. You may not even need so many devices as they collect more and more information. Ultimately, your smartphone is going to be the nexus. It's going to be the control center, if you will, for your health information. All this information will feed in along with other medical records and information, and that'll be very, very valuable. I think it will be used to help you manage your health care. Every time you go to your physician, you can transfer this information ahead of time so that your physician is actually aware of what's going on again, not just for that 15-minute window they visit you, but they'll be able to look at a year's worth of information and see how you've been managing over that year, whether there are times of stress, which you might identify through some of these physiological parameters. I think um, ultimately we're not just going to have the sensor information, we'll have lots of other information as well. You probably know you can get your genome sequence in principle these days. Uh, it's not yet moved into the healthy person's arena, but it will. And we believe in the future most people will be getting their genome sequence, so you'll know your DNA sequence. We'll have other kinds of molecular information. Our lab does a lot of this. We literally make billions of measurements, of molecular measurements on people. We'll collect that information along with these other physiological uh, pieces of information. Again, all coordinate this through some sort of central command and relay this information back through the iPhone. That's the plan. So ultimately, what I envision is a future where we're all going to be wired, at least at some level. I know some of you are wired in different ways right now, but you'll become electronically wired in the future so that you'll be able to measure these critical physiological parameters. And I really do think this is going to transform the way we manage our health and the way we manage our activities so that we can live better, healthier lives. So I'd like to thank the people in my lab who have actually been responsible for carrying out this work. And it's a very talented team. Uh, Dennis Salins, Shao Lee, Heather Hall, Dahlia Perman, Jesse Dunn, and uh, Sophia Rose. So thanks again for having me here.